There we go. Righty. I've got my camera on. Hey, let me turn it on. No, no. I've been kicked out of my room. Go to uh, the study, so you can see all the books and you've stuff. You've got an old analog knowledge base there in the background. Yeah, hundred percent. What <laughs> magazines are those on the shelf there then? They're actually all old getaway magazines. Oh, um, okay. okay. A couple of needlework books, geology books for my sister. Yeah, cool stuff. <laughs> nice. All right. So who's waiting in the in the wings? Are they did you already invite them in or? Um so I just invited whoever wanted to be here. Let's so... go look in the telegram and see if anyone wants to join us. There are a couple of viewers on the YouTube channel. Hi, viewers. Let me say Hey, hello. anybody wants to join us in the live room? We're just having an informal hangout. So um, either I'll join us in the link room. Um, in the YouTube chat if they want to join. There we go. Ta-da. You want to put it in the Telegram group as well? Yeah, I think I did um, just now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'll put cool. the link too. Um, there we go. All set. Right. So, who's in our in our channel? Um, in the in the chat room, I mean. Don't see anywhere on right now. I see John Neary is saying hi from the UK. Hi, John. Hi, John. Um, um, <laughs> what's this I just thing? In, interest in, in, while we're waiting for someone to come strike up conversation with us, and anybody who's watching, you're welcome to just wander right in and uh, join us in the chat room. I thought I'd put up the change log and we could like gaze and awe at some of the beautiful new features and that. maybe I could play with them on the screen. I'll share mm. that screen for a second. Um, um, Hello, Vera. Hey, Vera. Um, let's go to actually the official place to get the change log now because um, Intrepid Q just community member Richard Davenford just put the change log onto the main website. So we go to type change log here and see all the change logs somewhere down here in the long list is 322. Cool. And if we do this, we can get rid of that nasty looking highlight. So should we play a um, random feature of fortune? I'll scroll, you start, you shout stop, and then we'll pick one. You have to mm -hmm. shout stop at some point. Just yeah, oh. no, don't, don't read, just shout stop. Okay, <laughs> stop. Okay, what have we got? Um, oh, export all keyboard shortcuts to XML or PDF. So now I'm going to go and see if we can find a feature and how it works. So um, I'm just going to go and make my um, icons bigger here. Because Hello to our Canadian friends. <laughs> Hi, Canada. Hopefully that will make my screen a bit. Yeah, I could probably even notch it up. I so see, we're going to look um, for export Vera keyboard shortcuts. Yeah. that she wanted to ask but maybe let's have a look at this new feature and yeah, then fire, um, away as well, yeah. fire away your question and we'll do our best to answer it save so now okay so how did i get you i went to settings keyboard shortcuts and i said save and i said save as pdf all right and then i'm just going to go and stick it somewhere oh we could have called it q just Keyboard shortcuts. It's funny because we actually were having, I don't know if it was here on the open day, we were having a discussion the other day about, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a, um, uh, like a way to make the PDF? Because Niall had on his website before list. Look at that beauty. 
So now that you get a nice PDF cool. with all the shortcuts you can print up and stick next to your desk. Let's test one more thing. Let's go change a shortcut and see if it reflects the ones. I'm going to change the, the layer manager, the data source manager shortcut and see if it prints in the PDF. So, Hi, Shane from Ireland. <laughs> Hi, Ireland. Um, uh, where is layer? Oh, I'll oh. Hi. Hi. Ah, oh, it's McCathian. Hi, McCathian. Hello, Hi, McCathian. <laughs> <laughs> and who's Mr. G? Well, so who's in our, in our channel? Um, Giuseppe. Hi, Giuseppe. Hi. Uh, somebody's got the YouTube channel in the background. You just need to mute that up for all. Um, otherwise, you're going to have some terrible echoes. Mm. <laughs> Thanks. If you just go in your browser and mute up the other channels. So where was the layer list? Um, um, what am I looking for? <laughs> I've got the brain of a of a goldfish. Data source manager. It's not even data source manager. Okay. So let's change this uh, shortcut to. Control Shift Alt L. Uh, wait, did I change it now? Um, let's just do Control Alt L. Let's see if it works. Uh, control Alt L. Shift Alt Is it Gerbil who's come into our room? Hi. I'm going to find a shortcut key that's not already occupied. Okay, so I think I've changed it to alt -L. It's actually quite funny because you can't really tell what you've changed it to. Let's try and export it again. Let's see. Um, see what that looks like. Hi, Ethan from New Jersey. Nice to have you with us. Hi, Victoria. Hey, is it Vicky? Vicky from? Hello. Is it Cartosa, Vicky? <laughs> yes, it is. Hi. <laughs> Thanks Hi. for seeing you. Um, You're playing with the other feature. So you just have to find a feature in the change log and then try it out and see see what it does. But um. Here we go. There's the new PDF we made, and then we can compare them side by side. That's the old one. Uh, is on. Okay, is it Vicky? Vicky from? Hello. Is it Cartosa, Vicky? That's an echo coming from somebody. Uh, but, <laughs> thanks um, for me. Is that Mr. Jeff McKenna? It is. With rocking some awesome fashion. There's, give us a twirl there. Oh. Amazing. <laughs> I don't even have a jacket like that. I'm feeling like um, one step behind the trendsetters. <laughs> oh, I need me one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brand new this week. Oh, oh nice. wow. Yeah, I'll have to go That's shopping. Really Winter's cool. coming here, so I'll have to go shopping and get myself some winter gear. It, I saw um, it was Phosphor G uh, oh. Finland. Phosphor G Finland people wore it last week, so I. That's when I went and bought it. And look at the coffee mug fashion going on here. The mug is amazing. <laughs> I need some of this merch. We should have <laughs> Yeah, it, it had to ship from the UK, though. So, <laughs> where there's a will. <laughs> yep. Cool. So, should we, should we find another feature? Were we all impressed yeah, by that feature? I think that was pretty cool. Jeff, you can shout stop. I'm going to scroll randomly up and down. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm hoping you don't land up on the mesh. Just shout stop at any point. Just stop. OK, I'm quickly trying to get off the mesh ones because I don't know how to do the mesh stuff. Data defined raster opacity. So in case you didn't get what we're doing, we're just like randomly looking at things in the change log for 3.22 uh, and trying them out. Um, 
Uh, well, well, it's got a bit of a weird um, GIF going on here, or GIF. But let's see. The redraw, redraw layer only temporal mode for rest. Okay, okay. The new controller has been exposed, which allows the opacity of raster to be data defined. Um, so we can take it from uh, something like uh, an expression that's going to add a raster to our layer and see. Um, I'll define the raster quickly. What's happening in Canada? Uh, I, I, my news is I have a new puppy. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. Hey, can I show her? Please. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Now, if you'd come here 20 years ago, we might even be naming the release after your puppy, but you missed the book. <laughs> oh, well, it's an, an interesting name. She's named from Vanka, Phosphor G. He coined Phosphor G. Okay. And Vanka also named her Shilu. Meet Shy. It's uh, like an uh, in, <laughs> it's an Indian name, Shy, basically Shy. Hi, Shy. Beautiful. Is she a golden retriever or a border collie? Golden retriever. Uh, nice. She's eleven weeks old. So nice. Sweet man. <laughs> hi, sweetie. Hi, Shy. You're not hi. Doing the floor shots to show the puppy poop on the floor everywhere. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hi, puppy. <laughs> oh. I'm furiously trying to find one of my things. Oh man! So, um, is she going to become the um, the mascot? The mascot <laughs> or map server? Map server. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, yes. Well, she knows open source. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we oh. go. Here comes the rest of layer. Um, let's do. Let's do this one. Here we go. So now, well, I know that face. <laughs> yeah, I think so now does Macadian. <laughs> transparency stuff here. I do too. So basically, we've got this new little box here, and we can do something like this: um, user. This is like if you want to have a private raster, you can say. Um, if username equals, I don't know what my username is quickly, let's see, Tim Sutton, then you get to see it, otherwise you don't get to see it. 100, otherwise 50, oh, you get to see it in half. Did I make a mistake somewhere? No, that's good. Okay, so now I can see it and it's going, okay, I can't really change my username, I'll change the expression. Tim Fatten. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Made it half as transparent as it was before. Oh, cool. Back to the Wheel of Fortune. That was fantastic. Vicky, <laughs> you're next to shout stop. Stop. Add incremental field with modular operation. Wow. This algorithm allows the user to add a column with an integer that will be incremented from start to the limit. Ah, with the possibility of grouping, grouping to resume at this value of start following the group. So I think that lets us do something like uh, create a new layer. Um, new, let's make a new, let's make a shape file just as a little shout out to <laughs> the last people in the world still using shape files. Um, <laughs> Going old school. We were just talking about all the analog information behind me, so let's do it. Last shape file <laughs> in the world. <laughs> okay, and the yeah, we wish. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually Wild be a good Olsen name for a movie. Be... Huh? <laughs> Did you make a movie for that? Yeah. And in honor of Nile Dawson, I won't make the um, CRS 4326. So now we should be able to go here and try this fancy new, fancy new modulo thing. How do we do it? All number. Um, a new option called is included. Is this for uh, some specific provider? 
Oh, uh, that's for processing. Uh, okay, so I'm doing it wrong. We will still do that, and then maybe we've got to add some more St. Lucia goodies in here. Let's go find our St. Lucia goodies quickly. Um, so, so you've got to kind of process something somehow, and then let's take the boundaries here like this. Uh, that's not boundaries. Uh, you know what, I've got some kind of weird thing going on here with this. Yeah, there's sort of an interesting flashing going on. I don't know if it's my side or your side. <laughs> uh, it's me, my KDE, um, I'm test driving KDE for a week, and I noticed that it gives that weird flashing as like a side benefit when you, when you share your screen. Um, so uh -huh. it's, it's it's me, not you, I think. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it yet. Anybody know KDE? You can give me some advice. No. <laughs> um, as long as it's not triggering anyone's epilepsy, so yeah, we're good. <laughs> I'm trying to find some. Let's put some dams on there. So um, is this like new, new, the um, change log has been put out. I think I saw the message put out today. Yeah, it was put out today. So we, when we do the change log, we build it like Ch Charles is the change log hero. He curates it and makes sure that it's all ready for the release. Mm -hmm. And then um, we put out a call asking people f uh, to help contribute to the change log. And then uh, when the release comes then Richard, it's got some scripts that go and harvest the change log and put it into the QGIS.org website. Um, and that's how it happens, how the magic happens. <laughs> It'll help the elves behind the scenes doing all the hard work, basically. I don't know if Charles considers himself a little helper elf or a big helper elf. But, um, helper elf. I love the idea of QGIS elves. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try some African countries. Sorry, Mark, Kathy, and I don't know. I think I have some style rules fixed in your St. Lucia data that's preventing me from showing that. So, oh my goodness. Whoa. Oh, it's because I'm in <laughs> St. Lucia's coordinate reference system. Let's not do that. <laughs> we should have a separate, <laughs> is that the- um... Yeah, she, she doesn't oh, like yeah. that projection. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her I agree with her 100%. Uh, <laughs> good call, good call. <laughs> okay, so we're going to make a new processing. Um, what do we have to do? Um, add incremental field. This algorithm allows the user to add a column with an integer that will. In okay, so we should be able to just say modulo something or. In the auto incrementing field, and then we can choose the layer. We can say the field name. And we're going to say we want them to count from one to a hundred, and then we're just going to run it. And then we can symbolize our new layer by that auto incrementing field, I guess. One of the funny things is that when you're doing the change log, like what I'm doing now, is like if you, if when, like, because I used to do the change log before Charles took over, is that you often have to spend a lot of time hunting around trying to figure out how on earth to try out the feature so that you can write about it and tell the world about this new feature. Because it's not always obvious where to even go and find the thing. Mm. Um, so there I've classified our map based on, um, on our new modulo operator. I'm just going to make that not white. Um, from yellow or something like that, um, um, which is pretty cool. Nice feature. When would that be useful? Um, I don't know. Let's ask the audience. <laughs> Let's think about <laughs> it. Um, I guess anytime, like you're trying to like have like things grouped or sequenced, 
um, or maybe you have even just um, a layer with no IDs or something. You want to generate IDs for them. You could just have no. You could have it not wrapping around. So when I ran the algorithm, I made it wrap around right by setting this value to 100. But if I put it to 500, then it would just not wrap because there's not as many as 500 countries in the world. So you could just generate an ID column for your layer quickly. Well done, and thank you to, let me try his name, Luic, Luic Bartoletti. Thank you so much. All right, who's, who's next to call out? Uh, Mark Hathian, you're up. Stop. New GPS tools, GPS Babel device, configuration widget to global settings. Okay, that should be easy to find. Okay, so GPS tools is one of the earliest features in QGIS by, um, I think, Lars Luthman, who was a Swedish guy who was an, into orienteering, and he wrote all this cool stuff to um, let you, like, take your GPS tracks off your Garmin GPS and bring them to QGIS. And uh, Niall, I think, did this feature. Let's have a look and see if I might. Yeah, Niall did that. So he's given it some love and brought it into the, um, the main settings for QGIS over here. Um, let's see if we can find it. I see That's in maybe... the YouTube comments, Killian is saying this is exactly uh, what I needed a few weeks back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully now next time you need it, you know where to find it, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I guess it's good that what Niles done is basically surfacing this feature, which was hidden way down in the, in the depths of QGIS options somewhere. And now it's like much easier to find and you can basically um, configure your, you need to use this tool called GPS Babel. The Babel is like named after Babel fish. You know, if, I don't know if you've read the, uh, uh, um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? Um, where, they, um, where they had the Babel fish, you stick it in your ear and it would translate any language to any language for you. So that was the idea for the GPS Babel was going to translate uh, whatever GPS format into whatever other one you want to. So here it says, like, take it from the Garmin format into a GPX format, for example. So cool, that's a nice feature to have. I know, Mark, Cathy, and since you called stop, and you're also a GPS user, you're probably going to go and run off and use that this weekend as well. Well, I actually, it was one of the first things that caught my attention when I was looking at the log this morning. Uh -huh. Have you tried my to look total stations stop. there, hey? Or what have you got? Say that again? You have total station GPS or something. Yeah, actually, we do have some total stations and we do have some Trimble GPS receivers. Uh, I'll have to check with our surveying staff to um, verify when I get back to office. Did you know that you can also connect up your GPS to like QGIS on the tablet or on your laptop while you're running around the field? And mm. um... Yes, but I have not tested it. Mm. And, and that this thing is different. This is for like just offloading the day, the tracks of all waypoints off your GPS. Yeah. Cool. Okay, we we'll look forward next open day. Mark, Cathy, and come join us and give us a, some uh, report back of how fun it was in your own <laughs> with your GPS and QGIS in your in your hands while you were out in the field. If you ever get out in the field, I'm not sure how much time you get to spend outside. Okay, I'm rolling the wheel of fortune again, and uh, who's next? I guess it's back to you, Amy. Who's the person with the with the G? There's two Gs now. Um, uh, let's go with Giuseppe. Giuseppe, Giuseppe, maybe you want to give us a shout when we. That's good. That's good. Okay. You can help me with the pronunciation. I'm guessing Fran Francesco Bur Bursi. Bursi, yes. Bursi. Virtual rest support in raster calculator. Oh, yay. Okay. This oh, is that's a good one. That's a good one, yeah. So, okay. So, first, what is a virtual raster? Uh, Giuseppe is winning at QGIS roulette. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make a virtual raster quickly. I'm going to zoom in somewhere, really. Let me see if I've got the. Our favorite uh, workflow for making virtual rasters is to use the. Um, uh, 
SRTM downloaded by our friend Horst, Horst Duster from Switzerland. It's one of my like use every day kind of um, tools and users. Um, get rid of that African map. Um, uh, so with the GPS downloader, let's just get let's drop in some base map here. Um, should we put an Esri map on? No, just kidding. I wouldn't do that now. Let's put up a street <laughs> map here. Okay, and uh, let's go to since uh, Giuseppe is from, I'm guessing you're in Italy somewhere, Giuseppe. Is that, a, is that a fair guess? Yes, that's correct. And whereabouts are you? North, south, east, or? One of the big islands. Ah, let's go for this one or this one? Uh, it's uh, it's a Sicily actually, uh, along okay. the south. Yes. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Okay, and we're just gonna where you east, west, south, and north. Uh, I'm 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 north. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Okay, so let's go and grab some SRTM from here. Uh, so canvas extent. I'm gonna put them in. Um, I very organized downloads folder and call it Giuseppe. That's not your name, right? Giuseppe. Um, okay. Download. Ah, oh, it's only two images. That's perfect. Isn't that fantastic? Now you've got yourself two SRTM layers, and then we can turn those into a virtual raster. Uh, uh, there we go, build VRT. And then uh, we've provided those two images. Um, I'm going to give it, oh, we can just, just run it, I think, like that. Okay, so we've now got this VRT, and then the whole point of the change is that before you couldn't do raster calculator um, calculations on a VRT. Now you see our virtual raster is there, so we could say, I don't know, what's something intelligent to do with it? Um, um, oh, we can actually show the other nice new feature as well, because we've got an if clause as well, which we never had before. So now I can say if, let's see. If virtual raster is uh, greater than 100, well, how, what's the highest point where you live, Giuseppe? In, in the surroundings? Yeah. I wouldn't know. Okay. <laughs> Wrong answer. Okay, but I'm going to take 300 then. Then we're going to set it to zero. Uh, we have to say, let me just check the syntax. Uh, I think we did it like uh, comma zero. I better go check the change log for the correct syntax. Um, um, ah, it is right it's above there. Okay, so it's if then option one and then option two, but I don't know how to provide um, a value from another data set. I'm just going to presume that we can just pass the reference to the layer in as the option like that. Um, doesn't like that. Okay, so we're going to mask basically. We're going to say we're going to give everything that's below. Um, oh no, it's not, that wasn't the problem. This was the problem. We've set everything above to zero and everything. Uh, below 300 to the original value and then we give it a new output layer. It would be nice if we could output like um, a temporary file. We didn't have to go choose something on our disk. Um, all right, let's see what happens. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, whoa that looks very nice, doesn't it? Like some kind of art. Creation. 
with my neon maps, I like that. <laughs> so um, that was two two nice features, both the if clause, which before you could do with some like um, sneaky things, but it wasn't very intuitive how to do the if, and then also um, we ran that on the virtual raster. Rating out of 10 for that feature, I think 10 out of 10 for me. Yep, 100% for me. So, that what was cool. you saying there? Um, <laughs> Yeah, that, that's awesome. And I think that uh, Francesco is uh, also the person we have to thank for the if clause in the raster calculator. So let's have a look. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was both from him. Yes. Great, great feature. So in, nice. the, yeah. in the Italian group, I already offered to buy him uh, a few beers or, or several coffees or whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that it, sounds it, like a bargain. For this very very nice addition, good work on his part. Yeah, it's so nice, so nice. Um, I'm looking forward to using that because I think it's something that will be very useful. For me. Absolutely. Okay, should we go back to the wheel of fortune? I'm just happy yeah, I think on a mesh one, I don't know how to do is, mesh stuff. Is Gabo who's going to have to shout okay. stop? Gabo, that's all I needed. Yeah, thanks. Stop. Oh. Okay, we're going to take the upper one. Geometry Snapper Algorithm Optimization. The Geometry Snapper is now blazingly fast after benefiting from another round of optimization work. Small snapping distance values hanging curious forever is now a thing of the past. Thanks to Swiss Tierras Columbia and to Mathieu Pellerin, whose name I always butcher. I'm sorry, Mathieu. Um, <laughs> So how can we test that? Should we try to do some challenging? OK, let's polygonize our raster here and then see if we can snap along the edges of it. Uh, um, I'm going to take the right one here, yeah, that one there. So let me just check again. So is it a uh, geometry snapper? I guess I mean just like while you while you just digitizing, right? What is, how do you yeah. guys interpret that? That was my interpretation. Because there's also the um, yeah, the snapping distance. Yeah, that's for sure. The, the, just in the digitizing mode. I should have done another um, classification to get rid of. You know, just basically make a, a one or zero layer so that. Because um, it's now busy trying to build uh, uh, contours or what have you, polygons for all these indeterminate values here. It's okay, Q just going to do this blazingly fast, <laughs> just like the snapper. There we go. <laughs> we have faith. Come on, come on, come on. Have you, um, okay, this one is a. Yeah, there we go. But uh, uh, my favorite little bug in QGIS, it sometimes shows like different values in the two progress bars here. 92, 93. <laughs> it's our little um, shout out to Microsoft and their completely undecipherable uh, progress bar values. 100%. I think QGIS is just having my problem that when they speak, their speech sometimes take a while to catch up with their brain. So that's what's happening with those progress bars. Yay. Okay. Yeah. What did get? Well, the nicest progress bar that has ever been done has been done by Esri, among the, the other nice stuff that they have done. They actually have a progress bar that sometimes goes backwards. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're undoing all the work we just did for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the most frustrating and infuriating thing on earth. <laughs> That's just giving people false hope. That's mean. Okay, so now we've got this. We're going to snap to this layer, right? So let's make a new scratch layer. Um, new scratch layer. Polygon, of course. And we're going to put it in. Uh, let's do multi. Yeah, let's do polygon. Definitely not that. Let's put it in there as well. Okay. And then let's try our snapping toolbar out. Uh, 
snapping on. Advanced configuration, let's go here. Yeah. So um, let's, yeah, let's just snap to all layers like that. 12 pixels. Where's the streaming mode gone? Uh, there we go. All right, you ready? Let's see how blazingly fast it goes. Oops, yeah, I missed that one. It does seem fast. I don't know. And uh, this is probably quite a big complex polygon I'm testing on it because it's got lots of little <laughs> lots of little features in it. Mm. It really is pretty responsive, isn't it? Look how nicely yeah. it goes around the, the edges for me as well. Oopsie. Oh dear. Minus one point for me for making a self intersecting oh, polygon self during the live stream. <laughs> User error. <laughs> Right, we can fix this. There we go. It's fixed. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's pretty impressive. It's really great for the user experience because it can yes. be a bit frustrating. You click and then wait, click and then wait, and then yeah. I can feel myself aging. <laughs> yeah, no, it's absolutely seamless. Fantastic. That was Good cool. Pick. Yeah, and absolutely. Good pick. Shout out to Swiss Terriers, Columbia, and Matthew. Awesome job. Who's next on the wheel? Uh, there those, those mesh layers. I don't see anyone else in here. I can't see who's all in our chat. Let me look. Ah, uh, no, we've gone through everyone. So let's start with Jeff again. <laughs> uh, stop. Oh, okay. Oh, what have we got? Play legend. Use place. Oh, this is a great feature as well. Yeah, I'm glad you chose this one. Use placeholder <laughs> icon for legend for raster. So what this does is that, I don't even need to read the description. What it does is um, normally when you um, add a WMS layer to the project, it goes, does a get, uh, get legend graphic request. Right. And it puts that in the, in the legend, which can yes. be great, but it can also be a pain, pain in the ass because you've got all this long, complicated legend that you didn't want in your, in your legend. So now you can write your own legend uh, or create your own legend image and associated to that layer. So um, share a pic of your puppy there quickly, Jeff, or put, hold it up on the, hold him up to the camera and I'll take a, a snapshot while you finding the puppy, I'll find the WMS layer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, WMS, oh. WMS. Oh. Is he ready? Okay. Are um, you watching? She, she, sorry. Yeah, she, she. Here we go. Shy. She, she, uh, yeah. Gotcha. Oh. Okay. Oh, cool. So Save that. She's going to be world famous now. <laughs> world famous. We need to get her a QGIS buff or something. As yes, well. exactly. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go and fire up my embroidery machine downstairs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll find a way to get it to Canada. <laughs> yes, somehow. Let's get rid of all that stuff there. Um, this is quite fun. I hope you guys are having fun. I mean, at least one of us is having fun. It's me, but. <laughs> um. Well, I think I picked the right one. Yeah, because uh, Map Server, we can do something like this too. Set a specific key yeah. image, we call it. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So there's um, a fantastically beautiful WMS layer that I just happened to have lying around. And in case you're wondering why we're getting all these red things, I'm actually using the QGIS nightly, like the QGIS master. And with self-build, it shows a lot more errors than you get in the in the desktop build. So okay, so now we can go to our layer. So we've got this ugly looking thing that definitely not as nice right. as it might be right there. So we go there and we go um, legend. Do we go legend? Yeah, there we go. And then we've got the placeholder image. We're going to hunt ah. down that puppy. Um, puppy, puppy, puppy. Uh, Puppy.png. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize what you were doing. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. 
It's brilliant. <laughs> I'd call that a legend. But why does it show both legends? I thought it was going to just show the placeholder one. Um, yeah, okay. I'm confused why it's showing that one as well because I thought it was just going to show the other one. Right, yeah. Huh. But still, there's no there's no disputing it's better with the puppy than without it. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> What's the oh, uh, puppy awesome. score there? Two paws up, or I have to take a, a screen capture here. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! Thank you. Uh, Vera in the comments says yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the wheel of fortune. Who's next on the? Uh, on I the think block? it's me. Stop. Okay, enable, enable multiple metadata URLs. Can you just survey historically only support the provision of a single metadata URL, but now will allow multiple metadata endpoints to be specified in the service definition? Okay, so how are we going to demonstrate that quickly? I think we can try and rip something up. So I actually have this Portugal project I was just showing you. Um, Let's see if we can do quickly a get capabilities request on it. So one of the nice features of QGIS is you press F12 and you get this beautiful debugging. Oh, yes. It's it's a lifesaver. It is so nice. Yeah, so it is nice. so nice, yeah. And then if we look in here, we can see the capabilities request that it made. And you can right click on here and say open the URL and it will open it in your browser. I'm not showing. Uh, oh, it's decided to open in my text editor. Even better, who wants to look at a get capabilities document in their browser when you can look at it in your text editor? That's... <laughs> All right, and then um, so then we can go back. So I just need to figure out what um, what I was hosting here because this is hosted by myself. Um, this is coming from. Uh, OSM, my OSM project. Okay, so we got to we got to we got to dip into the old uh, Qt creator here and fire up another instance of QGIS and go to the source project. Yes, that was me typing one two three four five six. In case you were curious, <laughs> it's actually not the password for that one. Me, good, good security practices there. Okay, so we're going to go and uh, wait. Now I can type one, two, three, four, five, six. Or not. So uh, we're going to pull up that project. It's going to be a small bit of dead time while I find it. So break into song if you like. Hmm. Portugal OSM. There we go. I think it's that one there. Don't cry for my vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not the one. But okay, let's try to do it with this one. So I'm going to go here, and then we have to go to layer properties, right? Layer properties. Um, and where are we on the um, QGIS server bit here? Yeah. Let's go ahead and see. Let's take the roads, something that we'll, oh, let's do the whole of Portugal here. Yeah. Um, is it in, oh, it's over there, right? And now we can go to the metadata URL, which I have not added any. Shame on me. HTTP. ESRI.com slash QGIS rocks. I'm pretty sure that it's going to take you to an informative page about how wonderful QGIS is. Uh, <laughs> type FGDC and the format. What is the format going to be? 
plain text. Okay, and so what's changed is before, we could only set that once, now we can set that twice. Just to be nice to Esri, I'm going to, uh, let's give them an HTTPS one, because I'm sure they'd never deploy a URL without an S in the end of the QGIS.org slash box GIS rocks with an ode to how wonderful they are. There we go. Okay, so I set that and then I can um, save that. And that's my doing equal program. opportunity HTMLs here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now I've got to connect to my server and publish my project. Well, did you know that publishing QGIS projects is just as easy as editing a map file in map server? Mm-hmm. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Let's see. Let's see. So I'm watching. My, um, <laughs> there's my projects folder on my server, and here's my projects folder on... Uh, my desktop. I'm going to drag and drop that in there. Mm -hmm. uh, copy, please copy it. Yeah. And inside, once I've done that, I can go to, go to I hope I saved my project now. Did I save my project? That's going to be embarrassing if I didn't. Let's just open the game and see if I save it. I have to type all those Esri love letters all over again. Um, <laughs> Portugal. Ah, I did save them. Um, all switched on than I thought it was. Okay, so that's saved and that's published. And then we're going to go to the browser and we're going to connect to our newly made WMS service. I was going to pull a Tim line on you and say, anytime you add anything of value, save. Save it, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, a new connection. Okay, and then we're going to go. If you're following along, you can even try this. You'll probably break my little, poor little underpowered development box in the corner, but what, what the hell? Let's see what happens. Uh, right, um, that's just to create a WMS URL for that. Oh no, fail. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. What did I do wrong? I probably spelled the name wrong of the. Generally, just a typing mistake or something. Those two is it I think I actually did everything right now. Okay, quick live debugging session on my server here. <laughs> 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 Light debugging. <laughs> if QGIS server is actually running there, it is running. Um, why? Did, maybe it didn't like the ah. Maybe it didn't like the new uh, capabilities request because I haven't deployed the latest QGIS server on the server side, and I'm guessing Etienne's nice new tool needs me to deploy the latest QGIS server. So I guess I won't be demonstrating the server side of that today. Um, so I think I might have just broken it <laughs> by <laughs> playing a non-compliant. We could have a look and see if we get some useful error message. Well, Etienne's presenting next month at QGIS Open Day, so I might um, ask him nicely about my eyelashes, and then he can show us some mm -hmm. of that. Let's try one more time to get a get features and see if it um, gives us some kind of error message. Oh, okay. I've got bad, bad layers in my geometry. Ah, uh, ooh, that's bad. So another valid layer, Portugal mask. Okay, I've got some some dodgy things going in my project, but it, I don't think it was actually the the problem at hand. Well, let's move swiftly on from that debacle and <laughs> try the next feature. But that's cool. Thank you, Etienne Trimail. Is um intrepid QGIS developer and world traveler. And I don't know who El Fremer is, but thank you. Let me try it with a French accent, El Fremer. 
Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> oh, they're like teddy bears and polar bears, so they're good guys. Oh. There must be some kind of like environmental Interesting. organization in France, I would guess. So maybe they're out in the, uh, I don't know where they are. I was going to say the Caribbean, but you don't get many icebergs and polar bears in the Caribbean. So. Not usually. If you do, <laughs> then you know the global warming problem has been fixed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to move swiftly on to that one. I've got time for one last one, then I've got to run off. All right. And it's Vicky up. Do your thing, Vicky. Stop. Uh, load projects from GPKG using drag and drop. Oh, uh, yeah. This is a nice one. So before, if you loaded, um, if you drag and drop a geo package into QGIS, I would only show you the layers, um, but and now you can actually pick the project as well, I think. So let's go test it out. I haven't tried it out That's yet. That's interesting. Huh. That's pretty cool. So let's go find a project with a geo package in it. Um, um, you just projects. We've got my famous... Um, uh, dashboard project, where is it? Uh, this one here. Is the project inside? I think it's got a project file inside. A project. Um, Woohoo. Okay. So there we go. So I've dragged and dropped it into QGIS, and now it shows me the layers. Um, and it shows me the project. So I can just actually open the project straight from there. That's and pretty darn cool. That, that is very <laughs> nice. Useful. That is, that is very useful. Um, my dashboard's gone, gone a bit haywire. Maybe I need to give it some like control tab love here. There we go. It's still gone a bit haywire. Oh, maybe I get rid of all my warnings. <laughs> cool. That's very nice. Great feature. And who contributed that? That's a good one. Niall Dawson, thank you. Niall Dawson again. <laughs> I think we've got time for one more because it was so quick and easy to demo. Yeah, just one. Um, and I think it's Giuseppe's turn. Giuseppe, do your thing. Stop. Oh no, you landed me on the mesh one. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna take a do-over because I don't know how to do Murphy. Lamy. No Lamy. I really, I need to do a whole separate talk and just on figuring out how to do mesh editing because I haven't tried. All we need to get um, Lutra over to show us. This stuff is awesome stuff. Let's let's give them a shout out anyway. So a mesh means that you can create like a um, a surface of an area like the old tins and uh, what do we used to use tin and what was the other one? Um, who's the old Arkinfo users in the room here? But um, but uh, so basically you can it's it's sparse so you only have like um it only consumes a lot of data where there's a lot of um variability in the terrain for example mm -hmm. but i think with meshes you can also have multiple dimensions and you can store information on the edges on the faces and the vertices so they're a very very rich way to present QGIS data but before i think before version 3.8 uh, 320 so from 318 back i don't think there were any editing tools for mesh and then they created all these nice tools which i've never had a chance to go test where you can actually go and um like create the mesh yourself like move things around you can see there move vertices whatever you, but we'll let we'll have a separate deep dive into that because i i need to get set up and figure out how to even start showing that so for the last five minutes we'll do a do over but let's give a shout out to Lutra, Vincent Clorek has been on our QGIS Open Days before, and uh, to Hydrotech for sponsoring that feature. I mean, the, the mesh stuff and the, the yeah, it's like really an under um, sold part of QGIS. It's so powerful what they've been building, and um, really worth digging into sometime if you're doing anything with hydrology data or anything like that. Okay, so let's try one more. 
that we can actually try and I demo. see um, Ethan in the comments of um, the YouTube stream asks, can you show the vertex convert to curve? Is that a new, a new tool? Okay, so we're going to give Ethan a special key jumping. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, convert to curve tool. Okay. So this feature has the ability to convert vertices to or from curve vertices um, with the C and O keys. Okay. So we're going to go and make a curved geometry. Let's give it a go. So let's get rid of that again. And layer. Let's get our open street map background going again, just so that we land up somewhere on Earth. Um, okay. You just Mars, the next step. Let's go to, I never go to, I don't know, anywhere here. So let's go somewhere here. I don't know where here is, but let's go in here a bit. Okay, and then I guess we're in Russia, but I'm not sure which, sure which part of Russia I'm in. So, um, all right, so we're going to make a new scratch layer, uh, a new temporary scratch layer, and we're going to make a curve layer here. So let's do curve, uh, compound curve like that. We're going to put it to three eight five seven. Let's add one column to it, okay, and then we can start digitizing our um, curve. Uh, we do we want to add the extra digitizing that one there? So yeah, we want to go and make a curve like this, dunk, dunk, right? So now what, what I believe we can do now, just need to check is it in the, um, is it the vertex editor or is it while you, Doing it. Let's see. Just save that one there. And go with our vertex editor here. And we'd say, so it's supposed to be O key and C key um, to or from curve vertices. Let's look in the picture here. So they select the one. Okay, so if we go and select this, this one here, uh, I think I have to just click it. Sorry. Oh, that one there. I can't replicate it. Hmm. Maybe there's. A, let me just check if there was a tool active here. To me, it doesn't look like they digitize them as curves. It looks like they just digitize some of the squiggly line. Wow, my South Africanness is coming out. Sorry, <laughs> um, they just digitized the um, the squiggly line, and then they converted that sort of triangular shape to the curve using it. Okay, so you want to try the other direction? Let's try yeah, this vertex so, here. Yeah. Let's see. That's what it looked like to Not me. Not seeing any change. Let's make some. Let's make a new feature quickly. Um, let me just do it as a normal line, not a curved line like that. Let's see. Oh, come on. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. Let's get that off. There you go. Your is that squiggly or uh, what? In your nomenclature, I guess we're in squiggly <laughs> mode. I think squiggly. Uh, that's pretty squiggly. Cool. All right, and then let's try to edit that. I guess I need to highlight that. Nothing. Ah, there we go. Oh, I did it. <laughs> cool. Squiggle, squiggle for the win. Squiggle for the win. Okay. You That's kind of great. low key making a dinosaur with very strange teeth. <laughs> Let's see if we can turn it back to. Uh, so I pressed O to get those, and then I don't know how to get it back to the D squiggle or. Oh, you just toggle O. So okay. pressing O both times. So what does the C do? Uh, I don't know what the C key does. 
That's fantastic. The, the digitizing tools in QGIS are just getting more and more awesome with every release. Absolutely. Fantastic stuff. Cool. I think we'll soon be marketing it as an art program as well as a GIS program because you can do some pretty, as you know, Amy, since you've yeah. done a nice um, art scene before in QGIS. That's all I have time for, but don't let me stop the party. You can guys can take over. I've got to run off. And, um, uh, but it was great to hang out with you all. And uh, I hope everybody watching had fun. Uh, there's lots Absolutely. more nice features in the change log. So if you're interested in seeing what came out in 3.22, do head over to QGIS.org and just search for change log and look for version 322. And uh, I don't know how many there were, maybe 50, 60 new features. I didn't, I, I didn't actually count it, um, but just heaps of wonderful new features. And also we should give a shout out to all the bug fixes that happened from uh, Evan, um, uh, Alessandro, Niall, I think as well as another step, Peter Petrick, Sandro Santilli, Luik, but Toletti, sorry, Luke, for spoiling your name. Denny, <laughs> Julian, just look at all those bug fixes. Niall, and um, a lot of those were just like fixing broken stuff, you know, or stuff that didn't work quite right. And uh, some of that was funded by your own dona donated dollars. So thank you, everybody who donated to the project, because um, it all equals better quality product at the end of the day for everybody else. So. Mm -hmm. Rock on, QGIS. <laughs> Catch you next Thanks. time. I'll Thanks leave you so guys much, to Tim. carry on with the party. And, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Thanks. Okay, cheers. Always a pleasure. Bye-bye. don't know if anyone else wants to show any of the tools. Um, I know I haven't really looked at it yet, so um, I will have a look. But we have been going for an hour, which is the usual length of a session. So if someone wants to continue and just show a tool, that would be cool. If someone has any questions in the chat, we can do our best to answer. Um, but if not, then I think I will um, call us a day. As you can see, it's dark outside for me and I'm keen to go have some dinner. So <laughs> <laughs> any questions or um, comments? I know, Vera, you did want us to have a look at the um, uh, erosion to create a raster detail. Um, I don't think any of us are really an expert in that. So do just follow up on the um, Telegram channel, even send an email on the um, QGIS mailing list, because you may just sort of connect with someone who is actually quite rehearsed or knows how to do specifically that that you're looking for. So I think that might be a decent option for now. Um, if not, I will follow up with some of the QGIS gurus that I do know who are far better at QGIS than me, and they may be able to help you out. Um, anyone else got any more comments? All righty. Are we happy to then call it there? Sure. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. So thanks, everyone, for joining the Open Day. I know that this last session was a bit sort of unexpected, but it was great to have just a, a really nice community vibe, get together, have a look. So definitely have a look at um, the change log, at the new tools that you can use. You know, every time Q just comes out, there's always some awesome new thing that you can look at and play around with, and it expands the functionality. Um, so, yeah, and thank you to everyone who joined us in the Jitsi room. Um, and, yeah, thanks, my Kathian, um, who's still here. Thanks, Giuseppe. Thanks, Vicky. And thanks, Jeff. And that's us signing off. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. All righty. Stream ended.